Hello everyone and welcome to Sutton's Days. If you're new here, I hope you enjoy what we do. We do a lot of canning, food preservation, cooking, and preparedness. All of these are very near and dear to my heart, as I hope they are to yours also, and I hope that you enjoy the content that we put out. We have an action-packed month set up for you this month, so I hope that you'll stick around, hit that subscribe button, maybe the little bell for notifications. Join us on Monday Night Live. It is the best hour on Mondays. Okay, today, canning chat, we're going to answer some more of your questions. Um, these are actually very good questions, very common questions that canners new and old want to know about. Um, if you have additional questions that you would like to ask, please be sure to leave them in the comment section below. We'll be doing this every Wednesday throughout the month of March. Just a simple canning chat. Let's sit down, chat, discuss canning and the whys and the who's and the what's, and hopefully have a really great time. Let's get started. One of the first questions is about headspace. So we're always talking about headspace with the jars. When you're canning ugly chicken, you want an inch headspace. When you're canning winter jam, you want a quarter inch headspace. The headspace will vary depending on what you're canning and how you're canning it, okay? And these are the reasons why. Um, some people will say, you know, does it really matter? Oh. Absolutely, it matters. It is part of the equation of the canning process. So you want to take that very seriously. Here's some examples for you. Um, if you put too, too little headspace in there, okay? So if, if it calls for an inch and you do a half inch or a quarter inch, then what could happen during the canning process is that the ingredients of the jar could be pressured up and push the jar up and could cause a false, you know, not a false seal, but a bad seal. It could not seal at all. You could have your content siphon into the canner, um, and that's not what we're looking for. So when you're doing something like, especially meat, um, that headspace, like we showed in the meatball video, I pull, I'll put a link up above, but um, I had the I had the couple of jars where a meatball, just one, one little old meatball stuck up a little higher than it should have, right? And it was an experiment to see what would happen. And what happened is those jars did not seal because during the canning process, there's a lot of pressure. It's evacuating the air within the jar. Sometimes the contents comes out too. That is what siphoning is. And that can cause the jars not to seal properly. So that kind of headspace, very, very important. So you wanna make sure, you know, having too little headspace can be a detriment to the canning process for that reason. When you have too much headspace, that's a whole nother bailiwick there, okay? Now, a lot of times um, what can happen is if you have too much headspace, some of the items on top can discolor. Don't get discouraged about the discoloration. I often get asked with ugly chicken or raw beef, you know, chunks that you're putting in where you're raw packing. Um, when you do that, when you're pressure canning, what it does is you're not adding any liquid. It's just you know raw packing that meat down in there, filling as much of the jar as you can um, up to an inch headspace. But during the canning process, you're cooking that meat, and so it creates its own natural juices in the jar. It is not intended to cover everything in a jar. If it does, that's awesome. But if it doesn't, it's not a deal breaker. It's still perfectly good and safe to eat. But what you may notice is that um, there's discoloration. I have some pork in my pantry that I raw packed and pressure canned, and the very top part is sitting above any of the natural juices that re were created during the canning process. Now, when I first looked at them, I went, oh, well, that's different because everything above that line turned this snow white. I'm like, okay, we're going to check this out, right? We're going to we're gonna see whether or not this is good. And so when I cracked open a jar and put it into a pot, I legitimately could not find that snow white part. It's just what happens because it's sticking above the liquid and because there's there's no air in there, okay? So... It's perfectly normal, perfectly natural, not an issue. But if you're not putting, or if you're putting too much headspace in there, then it could cause additional discoloration. Again, it's not bad, it's not an issue, it's just what happens. But especially when, when you're looking at things like water bath canning, okay, if you don't, if you put too much headspace, most of your jams will call for a quarter inch headspace. If you do a half inch or more, what you're doing is you're not allowing it to can 
for a long enough time to evacuate the air out of that jar. You don't need to, uh, to what, most of the time when you're doing uh, water bath canning with jams and jellies and that kind of thing, I mean, it's 10 to 20 minutes, you know, that you're water bath canning them. Um, and that factors in that quarter inch headspace. If you have a larger headspace, then likely you need a longer water bath time. I don't have a calculation for that. This is just, that's the calculation that is determined when they tell you how long to water bath it for. So by having too much headspace in there, okay, it may not properly seal um, and it may not have enough time, <clears throat> pardon me, in the canner to properly push out the air for a good preservation. By not pushing out all the air, um, when you're looking at something like jams and jellies, then what you're running into is that you're still, you've still got the air in there and you could get some kind of mold, you know, growing on top. At that point, it's not like the good old days. You don't scrape it off and go. I wouldn't risk that. Um, that's totally a personal choice to you, you know, up to you, but, um, uh, not something that I would do. Okay. So you want to make sure that your headspace is as close to the recommended as humanly possible. And it's pretty easy to figure out. Um, you know, each one of those rims is a different headspace. The top one is a quarter, the middle one is a half, and the bottom rim is an inch headspace. Or you can use those handy tools that they have that tells you exactly what the headspace is. Very important, headspace plays a factor in the calculations for properly processing your food, whether it is pressure canned or water bath. Just last week, somebody asked, do you have to vent the canner? Okay, do you have to let that steady stream of steam, <laughs> the hardest thing I have to say, the steady stream of steam happen for 10 minutes before you start pressure canning, before you put the weight or the regulator on or the weight and, uh, you know, start bringing it up to pressure and then set your time. And the simple answer is absolutely yes. It's very necessary. What happens during that venting process is that the pressure builds up inside of the canner and it evacuates all of the excess air. The reason they have you do it for 10 minutes is because they want to make sure that it is all out. Okay, so it's really important to do that because that, again, is part of the calculation for the time that you're pressure canning. It also helps to correlate the temperature inside the canner with the pressure. Because if you're doing that too soon, the temperature's not where it needs to be uh, inside the canner. So the temperature creates that steam, the, you know, it builds up, it pushes out the air, but the temperature is just as important. And if you're putting that regulator or that weighted gauge on top too soon, then it's not coming up to the temperature that it needs to be for proper canning. So always, always be sure to vent a steady stream of steam for 10 minutes before putting on your regulator or your weighted gauge. The third question that I get fairly regularly and I see a few different things out there about it is, is it safe to oven can? Is it safe to prepare your food in the jars, can it in the oven? Okay, the simple, very straightforward answer is absolutely not. Now, number one, you have to deal with the fact that ovens are hard to regulate as far as temperature. Every oven acts differently all the time. I mean, if you've had any number of ovens, then you know that each one has its own personality and it doesn't regulate evenly. That uneven, very dry heat penetrates the jars much slower than in like a pressure canner or in a water bath canner, okay? Um, in addition to that, straight out of the mouth of the representatives of ball jars is that absolutely not. Do not put these jars in the oven. They are not meant for dry heat. These jars are created in such a way that they're meant to be under pressure. Actually, they're not even meant to be microwaved, you guys, okay? So every time that you put them into the oven or into the microwave, you are deteriorating and shortening the life of those jars. They're meant to be with liquid and the, the irregular dry heat can cause them to explode. Not only at that point do you have an issue with broken glass all over the inside of your oven, which is absolutely no fun, but now you've lost the food inside that glass too. Um, thermal shock could occur much quicker with that um, bringing it out of an oven, if you're if you're setting it up, you know, on the counter after that, then 
if the temperature is too despairing, then you're going to run into additional problems. And if the jar doesn't break, then, you know, it may not seal. It's any number of things. So the, the very short, simple answer is keep your jars out of the oven, not even for sterilization purposes, okay? You don't need to put them in the oven to sterilize them. Now, when you're pressure canning and it comes to sterilizing, you don't, you don't need to. You don't need to sterilize your jars. You do need to clean them. Make sure they're clean before you put stuff in them, okay? But you don't need to sterilize them. Now, when you are making things like jams or jellies or water bath canning, okay, then the idea is you're sterilizing them by having them in that pot of water that you're going to be water bathing them in. So you do want to sterilize those. That brings them up to temp. It's that nice wet heat. You add your contents. You put the lid on. You put it back inside. And all is well and right with the world. So it's not safe to can food in your oven, okay? Canning is a process that happens in a pressure canner, a steam canner, or a water bath canner not in your oven. They're not made for that, so please don't do it. Last but not least for the day, do I have to put salt in the jars when I can? When you are canning, salt is not part of the preservation process. I typically highly recommend not adding salt, okay? You can always add salt when you pull it out, but it's not necessary to put it in when you're canning. So you do not have to add salt. Um, again, I recommend that you don't. I think it's much easier to add salt when you crack open that jar and determine what you're going to make with it. When you add salt or seasonings or spices in with any of your meats, you then are locked in to what you can and can't use it for. Um, sometimes all of the above intensify in the jar uh, the longer that it sits there. So again, you're having to make up for whatever flavor comes out when you pull it out. Salt is not necessary to preserve anything when you are pressure canning. It is strictly for taste. So you can make the decision for you and yours, but know that it's not required. You don't have to do it. I would skip it. Okay, so that is our canning chat for today. I hope that you got something out of it. I hope that I answered some of your questions, and I look forward to seeing you again next Wednesday to answer more of your questions. Remember, if you have any specific questions that you would like addressed, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. I look forward to finding out the answers for you if I don't know and to delivering them on a Wednesday. Remember, if you like what we do here, please hit that like, subscribe, and share. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Until next time, be safe.